theme is power generation um, in particularly in short techniques. So what we're going to look at tonight when we do the whole cancer and loss, but we're going to look at some of the techniques from Techie Showdown. So Marcus, this is your new cancer. Obviously, guys, if you don't know it, don't worry about it. We're going to be going over the movements in some detail. Okay, uh, Techie Showdown, the whole of the kata is in Kibalach, horse riding stance, but just for to start, we're just going to do it all from Shizen, just so we can talk more about sort of sort of the hip rotation, the hip vibration with the techniques. Okay, so we're just going to go from Shizen tight. All I want you to do is just make sort of the hand joint position. Don't worry about the feet. So both hands are going to be shoot out. Uh, left hand on top of the right. Yeah. So this this is where you make this first position from. So like I say, we're not going to worry about the legs at all. The first movement. Is a tatty show sort of block. I suppose you could call it a high shoe strike um, as well, depending on sort of what you want to do with the application. Um, so with this movement, like we've often spoken about when we do these straight hand techniques, particularly when it comes to power generation, what I don't want you to do is just sort of swing this arm out. Yeah, you want to get, you can see how I'm getting this bend in the arm. And then the arm is whipping out here. So this becomes sort of with the bend, what the bend enables is this upper body connection. So I've got my lats tight. I've got this sort of pectoral, say chest muscle. This is squeezed here, which makes this strike very, very heavy, which you know, sort of, if you ever do this sort of thing against the bag, if you do it with a straight arm, you know, you just jar your elbow and you get very little effect. But sort of with this heaviness, with this bend, you have a lot more sort of body connection, which means more mass. And as you know, power is speed times mass. So the more mass you can get behind a technique, the better. And what I'm hoping you're seeing as well is that my body, sort of that hip snap we've been working on, is making this natural sort of rotation and in. So as we've spoken about before, particularly over the last few weeks, the way you want to use your hips, always bear in mind, if I can't move my arms, how would I move my arm? Yeah, if I want to get my right hand over there, that's sort of the feeling you've got to throw the hip this way. Yeah, so I'm getting that contraction here and out. So from this position, all I want you to do, so I'm hitting with the right arm, feel the left side snapping in. And then as I make the strike, the hip, Right hip will snap and the right hand will snap. Just try that lightly two or three times you're on. So it's a right sort of tatty shoot block or high shoe strike, depending on how you want to do it. So I say, guys, I do not want to see a straight arm. Yeah, like I say, that is straight arm is very, very weak. Very, very weak. Whether you're using it as a block or as a strike, a straight arm is very, very weak. Though it's only very slight, you must have a bend in your elbow. Yeah, imperative. This is whether you're just practicing the technique or even in the cast, or I would never perform this with a straight arm. Yeah, always make sure it's done with a bend. Just a few more. Okay, good. And then just relax there. So, guys, obviously, if you know the cast, this is, this is for the people who don't. The next movement is a Mawashi MP. Uh, so, think Marcus, Yanka, Carl, think Kian Yondan, where you're going to make. Wash the empty into the open hand. So the first movement is sort of this hip snap, this hip vibration. The next movement is all about the rotation. Yeah, in the kata, you're in keyboard action. Part of it is trying to keep the stand still. But like I say, we may come on to that by the end of the class, if not tonight, then at a future date. But today I'm more concerned about getting this hip correct, which is easier from Shizentai. So what I want to see now is where sort of both shoulders are, so you can see they're both facing this way. Try and get this full rotation. So from here to here. At the same time, you're going to get this crisp bend in the right hand and you're going to slam the left into the right arm. Me! Good. And from there, just a few sort of basic points to check. Just come down so you can see. Nothing like this. Nothing like this. So in terms of kata, obviously this looks quite sort of sloppy. Sort of having the the shoulder high, so karate is a martial art, guys. So we always have to have that. It's the balance between form and function. 
yeah, so obviously cast around peeling is our former, it has to, you know, has to look artistic and graceful and smooth, and blah, 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 blah. But part of that is also the functionality. So, and that raised shoulder means that I've lost this upper body connection. Yeah, so I know as soon as I see this elbow coming up, this arm, this elbow is not connected to the rest of the body. Yeah, so this, though the elbow is a naturally heavy strike, it does not have the same body weight that if I tighten my lats, tighten my chest. Yeah, so it's one of those things where sometimes we can check the form and know how effective the technique will be. Like this, not as much as this. Yeah, so you always want to try and make sure that's down, particularly in techie, sort of a lot of stuff like that can happen. Just always, always make sure crown of the head pushed up, like Sensei Huck was saying earlier on, chest lifted, shoulders down, hips pushing down into the floor. Yeah? Never have a, a, a change in that. Up, up, and slam the arm. So try a few of those. Go. Okay, good. And relax. So the next movement is the heat set. So from here, my right hand is open, my left hand is in fist. Inside the next movement, you're going to bring your hands down to double keep stay. So my right hand will be underneath the left hand on top. Yeah. Uh, for the counter, this is the point where you look. So the first move, you're looking to the right, looking to the right. The next movement, you'd look to the left as you make key stay. Like we just said, really important that the shoulder is not up. Very common mistake. Making sure this is down. In terms of the hips, for this next movement, this is rotation again. Yeah, guys. So the first movement. The hips vibrating out, rotate in, then you're gonna go the opposite direction. So at the moment, like I said, my upper body is like this, it's going to come back to here. Yeah, this way, this way. And like we were speaking about um, earlier on, this morning for the guys who were there, I don't want you to think I'm moving the hands. I'm moving the hands. So squeezing the lats, squeezing the bicep, and that pulls the hand in very, very quickly, yeah? Same for the left, squeezing the left lat and pulling the hands down very, very quickly. So in terms of bunkai, maybe a close, you could be treating this as a sort of throw, a backward strike here, a throw that way for the next movement. Um, particularly when it comes to throws, um, the last thing you want to be doing is trying to pull someone sort of this way, yeah, where there's no connection to the body, yeah. If you always try, if you're trying to move something, you're always trying to keep it close and having this connection. Yeah, you never sort of lift something like this. Yeah, you're always trying to lift it close. It's the same sort of feeling when you pull it. So you're trying to keep that close. So you're getting this rotation here, pulling this back and connecting the arms to the upper body. The heat say. Yeah, really nice, really nice, really nice. Carl, drop that left shoulder for me. Left shoulder down, yeah. Okay. Um, so I know we always try to cover all of the variations we can, guys, when we go through. Um, this next movement done one of two ways, either just sort of a straight punch down, or which is becoming more common, sort of the old way of doing it, treating it as a Gidambarai, uh, just a single arm Gidambarai. Um, for tonight, I would like you please to treat it as a Gidambarai. The reason for that is I want to see this rotation in the body. Yes, yeah, so this is very similar to a sort of the exercise we're doing the other week, where you get to use the sap of the hip to make the block and out. Exactly the same thing here. So I'm using the hip to get the preparation and then out, yeah? Single arm, get down right. So as my left hand prepares up, my right hip is coming in. in and then snapping the left hip in on the block. Try. Keep. Come on, you ready? So you moved it, that was the wrong way, Steve. So watch me from here. Maybe you do it from keep that sure then it's fine. As my left side, as my left hand comes up, it's going to be my right side that goes in. And then as I make the block, that way. Yeah, so it's almost like that opposite feeling. Yeah, like you try to make showman, showman hammy in the upper body. That way. 
And then it's Kagazuki. So Sensei Huckle mentioned this earlier on. What I want you to do with the hip is exactly the same as you were doing with these punches, the Ura, the Tassi, and the Chokazuki. So as the punch starts to go out, the punching hip goes with it. Yeah? As the punch goes out, the punching hip goes with it. Then as you make that point of Kime, as you hit the target, you snap the hip back. Yeah? It's exactly the same thing with the Kagazuki. So from here, as I go to punch with the right, right hip starts to go. Right hip starts to go. And then as you reach the point of Kime, as you reach the final point, that hip will snap back. So right goes in and snap. This way, this way, this way. Try, go! Excellent, just one quick point about the Kagazuki. Again, going to that, that idea of form. Kagazuki, this sort of hook punch, Remember, the edge of the fist finishes in line with the side of your body. Same height as regular Chokazuki, just with that natural bend, slight downward slope. So it doesn't finish too far. Again, you lose connection. Doesn't finish too small. A sort of, this would be a, a very, very short technique, sort of coming out, and it'd be very weak. Keep it close. And finish in here. Yeah, that's the same for Gion. It's the same for Yangona. It's the same for Teki Shona. And then relax. And then we're going to do those same five movements now on the other side. The count's going to be a little bit more rapid. I'll just remind you of the points. Um, obviously, you don't make this movement quick in the kata, but we will tonight just for this. So from here, it's going to be the left this time. So my right hip will go in. Going to get that bend in the elbow and snap the left arm. Switch. So opposite side this time. So now I'm going to get this crisp bend in the arm. First movement, vibration. Second movement, rotate it. Shoulders down, body as much as you can, getting that full twist. Knee! Rotation again. So as I open the body, connection to the arms, heat sailor. Turn! So exactly the same as that exercise we've been doing recently, where this body will rotate in as I prepare. As I prepare, rotate, and then open. Chi! And then same as you do with Sensei Huckle, punch and hip goes with the punch. And snap back on completion. Go! Okay, good, and relax. So guys, in your own time, I would like you to try those five movements on each side. Yeah? So it's the open hand block or strike, MP, keep safe, get out of right, Kagazuki. Yeah? Just do them light with an emphasis on the hip. Yeah? So it's vibrating in, out, rotate, rotate, vibrate, vibrate. Yeah? So rotation is the full body movement to transfer mass. Yeah? That's why we rotate. Yeah, guys, that's what the rotation is. From the showman to hammy, it's about getting body mass in. Body mass in. Yeah, that's why we rotate. Yeah? Vibration is about connection. Yeah, so particularly in Shizen or when you're in a short stance or you're close, you use the vibration to make your leg because there's no, there's no muscles in your hips. Yeah, guys, so when we rotate, when we vibrate, it's the legs that drive the rotation. Yeah, so the vibration just enables that in a much smaller movement. Yeah, and it snaps off, uh, which sends the power into the opponent. So three types of strike ring that we practice in shows can be have a snap, yeah, which is that snap back, which normally if you hit someone with a snap, the idea is that they absorb the power. That's, you know, when, you see, when they see that and it sort of collapse this way, where it goes right into them. Then you've got the Kokomi, which is a thrust, where they get pushed away. Yeah, obviously like Kami or even just sort of a throwing punch. Yeah, that. And then you've got a, I can't remember the Japanese name, but it's essentially a stamping technique. Yeah, smash, coming down, coming down, where obviously you're not stepping off on the floor, you're not down and up off the floor. Yeah, it's just coming down. Yeah, I'm um, not looking at that today, um, but I suppose we can when we come to talk about the he's Gary's, but yeah, really for this, we're looking at that uh, snapping technique, that thrusting technique, 
and hip rotation, hip vibration. Okay, guys, so I know I'm doing a lot of talking. New cassa for some of you, newer theme, so I get to work my jaw. Uh, guys, so I would like you to practice those five movements at least. I'm just lightly in your own time. Any questions at any point, either just type or shout in your own time. Go. And relax. Okay, good. Um, so, guys, as you know, uh, power is speed times mass. Yeah. Um, it's very, very easy to do techniques fast. Yeah. Anyone can throw a punch fast. Yeah, they, they, they can. Um, the key to what we're trying to do here is we're trying to generate as much mass as possible. So I may have used this analogy before, but if you punch, sort of, say I'm in my Zenku statue and I just punch and I allow my arms to come out and I rotate my body, this is just maybe a, a 10, 10, 12 kilogram arm. Yeah, it still hurts. It still hurts if I snapped off the arrow thrust it through, it would still hurt. But again, if we use sort of leg drive, connecting the leg, to the thigh, to the glute, to the hip, to the chest, to the arm, suddenly this becomes, you know, it's it's my whole body. Yeah, so it goes from a 12 kilogram arm to sort of a 70 kilogram body mass, yeah, being slammed into the opponent. Yeah, and particularly when you start doing that at speed, you start to generate very, very effective techniques. Yeah, like I said, rotation is about transferring that mass and that vibration, which Sensei Huck was talking about, where the hip goes forward and then snaps back. That's about body connection, yeah? So one is throwing body mass in, and one is just getting that body connection. So it's, it's, it's the leg is firing all of it, essentially. Yeah, guys, that's what it is. You're getting power from the floor into the technique, which makes more mass, okay? So now we're gonna do those five movements in stance, okay? So, techie showdown, and you start in hey, look at that, so feet together. Legs just sort of with that natural straightness, so they're not rigid. Just with sort of that, but how you stand naturally, right hand underneath, open the hand, left hand on top, open the hands. Okay. So, though this first movement is done by one count, when you come to do cast by no count, uh, we'll break it down for today. So, first movement, you're going to bend your right knee. As you bend the right knee, you're going to step with the left foot. Um, some people teach this. Step this sideways step on the edge of the foot. Some teach it on the board of the foot. Um, people teach the edge of the foot because the idea being is it keeps a label so you to keep the level, um, which it does. But I think the negatives outweigh the pros with this one. So I would always try and go on the board of the foot when you do a sideways step. Okay, yeah, guys. And as you do that, you're going to keep your hands completely still and you're going to look to your right. Edge. Okay. So from here, this is where you're gonna make the open hand technique. But before you do that, as you flatten the left foot, as the left foot steps down, the right knee will come up. Knee! And then as you land in Kibalach, as you go, this is when you make that strike. Turn! Okay, good. Carl, just look at my arm. So cold, your wrist must remain straight. Yeah, even if I bend the arm deeply, that wrist is still straight. Don't do something like that. So now we have that rotation, but the challenge now is as my upper body rotates, that left knee doesn't collapse. Yeah, so you've got to keep the stance and as much as you can get. Left hip drive, upper body rotation. Tuck. Same thing. So keep the stand still. Rotate the hip. Open the chest and look to the left. G. Prepare. And down. Go. And vibration. So remember, push the hip. So I can push the hip without losing that knee. Not this. Push the hip, snap the hip, go! And then back to the steps. Okay. So with this first movement, you want to drop. 
Okay, guys, so this this is one of those ones where like, all of us are moving like this, but it has a quickness and then it intensifies. Yeah, so it's quick, smooth, and then up fast. Yeah, so that's the timing. I'm going to do it by that three counts one more time. So the first movement, remember, arms stay still, upper body remains still. Drop, edge. And then as the left foot goes down, so it's this sort of feeling, yeah? As the left foot drops, the right knee comes up. What you're not going to do is straighten the left leg. So from this position, my left knee is bent. As my left foot flattens, the left knee will stay bent. And I'll rise. So you're keeping a consistent height. Yeah, guys, you're not going high, low, high, low. From that first movement, you're trying to stay the same height. So from here, keys are getting. Knee up, just like a bike Gary. Try and get the high and close knee lift. Yeah? Me! And then what we also have here, which we've not spoken about, is leg drive. So we have this bend, so we can use that to push, push down. Turn. On your rotation, keep the leg still. Three. Keep staying low. Go. So upper body, in and out. Change. With the hip, with the punching hip, and snap. And then back to the start, Kata. So guys, we're only going to do these five movements from this first side. Then over the next sort, next week, we'll probably get to the end. Um, but just started looking at those principles tonight. Are you all right? So now we're going to try that whole first movement. So it's a quick drop, quick drop, stay the same height as the knee comes up, leg drive, and hip vibration. Wash the empty. Knee. Left shoulder relaxed. Geek say. Turn. Remember, look on the geek say. Get down right. Two. Good. Kag suki. Go. And back to the stars. Okay. First movement. Ready. Pitch. The end, the ending of the technique, what you're doing is the, the arm, the upper body is really, really good. Um, so the first point, at no point throughout this whole first sequence do you stop. Yeah, so from here, like I said, you have that quick drop, and then it's smooth, and then so it's quick but continuous. So from here, I don't stop. Down, I'm bending, lifting, and it's a, even the knee doesn't stop. You don't stop. And in, I know we did that just to show the technique, but it's smooth up and in. Yeah. Um, second point, and so not everybody is doing this, but just check. Treat this step as almost a reverse coaster dash. So, coaster dash is the stance we have that cross leg stance, the first ki and kian yonda, uh, the jump in kian goda, and that movement. So, think of it as almost a reverse coaster dash. Yeah, so your knees are close, and that left foot is very, very close to the right. So you're not stepping long. You see how there's quite a significant gap between my feet. Close, down, down, not right. Yeah. So try that first movement again. Ready? With the right knee. So this is what I don't want you to do. From here, I don't want you to think my right foot comes out and down. Yeah, you see how my foot is coming out and down. Treat the knee sort of like an upside down V, yeah? That. So the knee comes up and then just where my body naturally shifts, the foot will come down into Kibalach, yeah? Don't actually make an effort to sort of send the knee out and down, yeah? Just think of it as going up, down, up, down, up, down, yeah? Don't send your foot out. So that first movement, one more time, ready? Itch. Yeah. Good. Watch the empty knee. And try that one again. So watch 
my left, with these MPs, for the vast majority of MPs really, you never want the fist to come away from your body. So for instance, what I saw from someone then was this. See how my arm is coming away? Close, close. So my fist stays close to my body at all time. Yeah, and again, it helps if you think about the application. So this movement um, may be blocked and hit here as you've gone through with the slap around to the back of the head and you point one to the elbow. Yeah, what you won't want to do from this position, if you've got hold of someone there, is take this hand out and then sort of come in. This is where sort of the shoulder starts to come up. You see how my hip is being left behind and you have a big disconnect. Yeah, like I said, this would probably still be quite heavy, particularly if it's maybe got a downward curve. It'd be very, very heavy, but not as heavy as that full body movement. Yeah, so keep the fist close and make sure hip, chest is driving in. Keep the fist close. Knee! So again, think about maybe this is where their head is. Yeah, so this is sort of where you maybe need to think outside the box in terms of application, because this is where their head is. Yeah, they're here. So it could be that maybe you're treating, though you may be taking a liberty with the shape coming here, could be coming this way. Just hit it with an elbow down. It could be that you bring this in with this and you throw in, yeah? But whatever you do, you wanna make sure you keep that connection, yeah? Keep this connection. Not here, not here, close. Turn. So, like I said, I know some people treat this as a punch. If you were to do this as a punch, which is absolutely fine, you would look again at that hip vibration this way. So it's never just the arm. There, that way. So you're still hitting with the body weight. Or if you wish, as we've been doing with Kidambarai. Chi! Kagazuki. Hit with the hip. Go! Ayam. Okay. And you're going to do those five movements. So you're just going to do them light with you down. Two, three. Yeah, first five. For now, still with a bit of pause between each one. Yeah? Stop. Stop, check it's correct. Stop, check it's correct. Stop, check it's correct. Stop, check it's correct. Yeah? Lightning. Hadra. Okay, and then relax. And then to finish, guys, we're going to do those first five movements fast. Um, and again, this is where a little bit of form is going to be brought into play. So I want you to think about that because though we've sort of broken it down, we're only doing a short segment. Still think of it as a cancer. So as well as making the techniques and the fundamental points we're working on effective, it's also got to look good. Yeah, uh, one of the main issues with techie is not so much the first move, but black belts, I'm sure you've seen this before, where people go, and they just rush. Yeah, it's fast, but it's wrong. Yeah, I, and I know Sensei Hogg would agree with me, we would always rather see one, two, three, four. It may not be as quick, but it's a hell of a lot sharper and it's more correct. Yeah, each of it's a fast, 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 as opposed to a mess. Yeah, so it is going to be to count still. I want you to think about the technique. Think about that power generation. Think about that final point here. Everything complete and correct. Ready? Steve, start with your feet together, please. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, Rob, that was nice. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Hey, Yame. And Honore. And relax. Very good, guys. So like I said, um, we are, we are going to be doing techie. Probably, we'll probably finish it by next week. It's a very, very short capture. And uh, sort of, Marcus, it's, it's very symmetrical. So after you've done the first half, it's exactly the same, just going the opposite way. Yeah, it's a straight line capture. and keep it up. It's just going to your right and then to your left. Um, so once you've got one half, you'll pick up the second half very, very easily. And like Sensei Huckle said, it, it's a really nice method of working on this close proximity. Um, 
power generation. 